Hello YouTubers, fellow hams, new hams. Well, it's winter. Oof. Chilly down here. It's uh, not quite getting down to freezing. Eh, getting close to freezing at night, but that's okay. Uh, it still gets nice during the day. Um, so, it's uh, the holiday season. And uh, I'm taking a little break from the CW Flea transmitter. I needed a break from it. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I'll talk at the end of the video about something else that's going on. But uh, I thought I'd talk briefly about something that I was thinking about the other night. Uh, a while ago, years ago, there was another sh channel. I think it was called Ham and Shortwave Radio. It's, it's been a while. Um, it was an interesting channel early on. He, he, he built a lot of uh, neat kits and projects and, and talked about things. And I think YouTube got to the guy, though, because... Uh, Later on, before his channel went away, he got kind of argumentative and combative. And uh, there was a lot of uh, debates that turned into arguments in his YouTube comments. One of them that stuck with me, um, because I really hadn't given it a lot of thought at the time, was, do you need an antenna tuner if you're just shortwave listening? Um, obviously, you need an antenna tuner if you're transmitting, because, or if you don't have a resonant antenna, um, or if you want to use a single antenna for multiple bands, you don't want to hurt your transmitter. But do you really need it for shortwave listening? Is there an advantage to it? And uh, at the time, one of the arguments was that the antenna tuner is not going to make the antenna capture any more signal than it's going to capture. Uh, which is true. The antenna tuner is not going to change the antenna, right? Um, it's still going to behave the way that it would normally behave. And a single antenna is not going to give you the best performance across a broad range of frequencies for receiving. Let's, let's talk about uh, impedance and wavelengths for a minute. This is a, a simple dipole antenna. You could use an end-fed wire, you could use whatever type of a wire you want, but the important part here is the wire in the air. These elements from here across, that's the active part of the antenna, and that is what's intercepting signals. Radio waves vary in wavelength depending on frequency. So, if you imagine that this is time going in this direction, right, and the voltage amplitude of the radio signal, and it's a wave switching from a negative to zero to a positive voltage and back, over and over again, um, over time, it looks like a sine wave, right? And this is the wave that's passing past your antenna. And the higher the frequency, the faster that that, that wave is alternating from positive to negative, the shorter the wavelength. Time is linear, right? So the higher the frequency, the shorter that length. A uh, resonant antenna is going to be a half a wavelength, and the uh, the wave of the radio radio wave will set up across the antenna just like that. Just a nice, um, actually, that's a little bit off. It should be from the zero crossing point. <laughs> Didn't do that quite right. Um, it should be from the zero crossing point, not from the negative part of the wave. But you get the idea. Um, half the wave would actually be from about there to about there, and that would be um, a half wave resonant, which is what you would want for your antenna. So I didn't do this graphic quite right, but you get the idea. A half a wavelength is the resonant frequency. That's the ideal condition uh, for a radio wave to be picked up by this wire. Shorter waves um, are going to be uh, across the wire on multiples, you know, and... and all of these differences at different frequencies are going to change the impedance that you see at the feed point. In, a, in an ideal situation with a resonant antenna, and let's say instead of ladder line you had a 50 ohm coax here, you'd have 50 ohms impedance at the feed point at the resonant frequency. 
but at different frequencies, that impedance is going to change, right? Because you're going to have multiple waves or less than a half a wave across that wire. It's still going to pick up that signal, just not as efficiently as it would as a half wave. And at different frequencies, that impedance down here is going to change. You know, it's not going to be 50 ohms. And that's where uh, a big part of the problem is. So if you have a single antenna, and uh, there's, there's other solutions we'll talk about again in a minute, but um, if you have a single antenna and you want to get the best performance uh, receiving across multiple sections of the shortwave spectrum, um, that varying impedance is going to be a problem because at the feed line where it hooks to your receiver, that antenna system is going to be presenting a complex impedance that's going to change based on the frequency that you're interested in. But your radio is always going to be a 50 ohm impedance. And if those two impedances don't match, that's kind of a choke point. Signals coming in from the antenna will hit that, that change in impedance and some of them will bounce back instead of getting into your receiver. Um, and, and you won't get the most efficient transfer of energy from the antenna system into your receiver because of that difference in impedance at that point. Now an antenna tuner is kind of like a variable transformer for impedance, okay? Um, it affects or it adds capacitive reactance and or inductive reactance to counter the capacitive reactance, inductive reactance of the antenna to balance things out and bring an impedance down to what your radio expects. So the antenna tuner sitting in the middle might see like 300 and some ohms of impedance from the antenna at a specific frequency and will transform that to 50 ohms to allow the energy to flow across it, across the transformer into your radio. So an antenna tuner can definitely improve things for receiving frequencies that are not resonant on the antenna by transforming that impedance. Um, let's look at a, a real world example with my, uh, my blue VNA and uh, my antennas. I have a doublet that's up that uh, is about 120 feet long. It's a non-resonant antenna system and I have an LDG tuner that I can uh, used to match that to 50 ohms for the radio. So let's go and let's let's look and, and see um, how that makes a difference. Hello. I'm trying to get an image off the tablet here without because I need to interact with it and I don't have a screen recorder. Man, so much glare on this screen. I guess you're just going to have to see me in the background. So anyway, um, I'm connected to my VNA and I have it hooked up to my doublet antenna. And uh, we're looking at the whole HF spectrum from uh, DC to a little over 32 megahertz here. So I'm going to sweep it, looking at Z, which is impedance. And uh, this is with no antenna tuner. Yeah, no antenna tuner. So this is what the impedance of the antenna looks like when um, it's just the raw antenna. And this uh, line right here is the 50 ohm line. And you can see at several points we, we get a match of impedance. Let me draw, put a marker on here. Put that up there. And uh, if I move that, if I can move that, come on. There we go. And you can see at some points, uh, we get close to 50 ohms, like right there at 27.615 megahertz. This would work on CB and uh, around 25 megahertz and uh, 23 and 21.8 20 megahertz we got a pretty close match there this would probably receive WWV pretty well as it is 19 17.9 around 18 other points, uh, there's like sharp increases, like here we're 370 ohms at 16.3 megahertz. We wouldn't be as sensitive right there, would we? And uh, 15 megahertz, we get close to 50. Terrible around 13, which is another hot shortwave area. 
So yeah, you can see how the impedance is varying on the antenna based on frequency. There's 53 ohms at uh, 11 megahertz. Uh, down at uh, 10, where WWV is, 91 ohms. Wouldn't be as great that great on 10. Let's go down to something like 40 meters here. Okay, so okay, there we are. Um, well, that's a little high. All right, <laughs> quit moving. Okay, 40 meters, um, 30 ohms. Not so great. Now I'm going to switch the antenna tuner in, and I have the antenna tuner already tuned for 40 meters because I was just on a net. I just switched it in, and we'll sweep it again. And now, where was I for the net? I was up around here. Yeah, and uh, keeps moving when I let go. Well, anyway, you can see that it came up, and we, we're hitting. There's a 50 ohm point in here about where I was operating. Too sensitive at this range. But you can see that the impedance came up. Uh, come on. Can I do this? Oh, I can do that. There we go. We'll zoom in a little bit. Now it should be easier to move this. Ah! Okay, well, the point is, there, 7.16, that's close to where I was, 54 ohms. Um, without the antenna tuner, is this going to reset or is it going to keep my zoom? It kept my zoom. 27 ohms. So there's a marked difference there on 40 meters in that impedance. We're too low with just the antenna, and with the antenna tuner in, we are real close to where we want to be. So let's go to the radio. Okay, so now we're looking at the radio. This is with the antenna tuner in. And uh, looking at the scope, you can see the signals, how many of them there are, the strength of them. Just get on one of them. We don't really need to hear what he's saying. We just really need to watch his signal strength. And this is with the antenna tuner in. Now remember, we're getting close to 50 ohms there. I'm going to switch the antenna tuner out and watch what happens to the signals. Now you see that drop? Antenna tuner in. Boom. He's, over, he's peeking over S9. Antenna tuner out. Now he's only peeking around S7. And you can see how the rest of the signals got a little darker down here and fewer of them. Antenna tuner in. See how everything came up and his signal came up? Because we got closer to the 50 ohm match. Antenna tuner out. So, as you can see, it definitely makes a difference on the amount of energy getting through to my receiver based on that impedance being changed. So an antenna tuner can definitely help you with receiving. So as you saw from the, uh, from the demo, um, the antenna tuner definitely brought signal strength up on my receiver uh, and, and it made a difference. It didn't change the antenna. You see, that was, that was what caught me with that first argument that I saw in that comment thread was the antenna tuner won't change the antenna. The antenna is a physical wire of a physical length and it's going to capture energy from those passing magnetic waves better on some frequencies than on others. And the antenna tuner is not going to change what that antenna is doing. But that impedance varying at the feed point is, a, is your choke point and the antenna tuner is going to help there. It's going to get a better transfer of energy from the antenna to the radio at different frequencies by matching that impedance. So from that point of view, yes, antenna tuners are a good thing. Even for shortwave listening, it can improve the signals that actually make it to your receiver from the antenna. Uh, and it's a good thing. So that answers that, I guess. Um, so yeah, hey, it's, uh, it's the holiday season. Happy holidays to everybody. 
And uh, no, that's not a war on Christmas. Um, I say happy holidays because I have a broad viewing audience across many cultures, many religions, and everybody has some kind of a, a celebratory thing they do this time of year. So I'm just covering everyone. Happy holidays to everyone. You know, for you Christians, Merry Christmas. For the Jewish folks, Happy Hanukkah. For everybody else, happy whatever applies to you. Honestly, I hope that you enjoy this season and you have a good time and, and visit with family and friends and, it, and everything goes well for you. I am going to take a little time off. I'm going to uh, take a little holiday time off myself because I have a new piece of uh, kit that I need to play around with and learn how to use. Um, I save up a little money. I put aside a little money uh, throughout the year and around this time of the year I buy myself something. And uh, last year, I think it was the uh, ICOM 705 that I got. And uh, this year I picked up something else. And I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but uh, it'll be in a future video. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to take a, take a week or so to, uh, to learn how to use it. And then I'm going to finish building the CW Flea and, uh, and get that on the air. That will probably be the video when I come back. We'll be building that, uh, soldering it all up and then uh, testing it out on the air. And uh, then it will be getting close to Quartz Fest time. Uh, Quartz Fest here in the desert in Jan the last week of January. Um, January 23rd, I think, is when it starts, or 20th, 23rd, somewhere in there. Um, I'll be going up to uh, Quartzite, Arizona, which is just north of me here, and uh, hanging out for the week with um, all the hams that come, in for the area, come into the area for that, which is kind of just like a big gathering. There'll be uh, oh, a few hundred to maybe close to a thousand hams that'll come in and, and park out there in the desert with their RVs. And we'll walk around and meet a few people and, uh, and uh, probably look at some of the setups and some of the antenna setups and what people are doing out there. It'll be real interesting. So that'll be coming up towards the end of January. And then uh, somewhere in there, I'm gonna show you my new piece of kit and what it's for and how I'm gonna use it on the videos. So until uh, then, happy holidays. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.